Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Gamers Podcast. My name is Jacob Best the Realm Hotter. I am joined today by Trollbeard. Hey, how's it going there, Jacob? It's going pretty good. And Bob is still missing for the time being, and he may be for a little while, just so he can get... He's getting married. <laughs> I don't think that's yeah. crazy to say. He's getting married, he's got stuff to deal with. And that's yeah, pretty much the of that. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, we're going we're gonna to hold down the fort here with the video games. Hey, he's still playing games. I know he's. I think he's playing World of yeah. Warcraft. He's actually a little announcement. Actually, I think he announced this already. But just a reminder, yeah. he is uh, running a World of Warcraft guild. So if you are interested in that, uh, go to futurevillains dot com. Go to our Twitter. Go to his Twitter at Doug Theme Song. Check that out. Let him know that you're interested in that. Uh, they've got quite a few members now, and they they're going to be on our Discord and everything. So if you want to hang out with the Discord where this podcast is recorded, there you go. (laughs) On the old Trollbane server. Because I I liked... That's uh, the server Bob plays on. Oh, okay. Yeah, Trollbane. (laughs) (laughs) So you're not welcome? Yeah, I guess. It's like, yeah, Bob, I was going to start it up, but, you know, I just said no. You think you can log into that server with the name Trollbeard and just get insta-banned? That would be fucking fantastic. Oh, uh, but yeah, Blizzard's not that. I wouldn't say that creative, but they're not that vindictive. I don't know. It's not something they would do. If it was a smaller yeah, game, maybe. No. They're they're not that semantically petty. Yeah. So we've been playing a bunch of games. Uh, let's go ahead and start off with what you've been playing because there's really no news. <laughs> yeah, it's you know like we had just talked about. You know, it's the summer drought. Especially when you're in between two big events, you know, like the weekend after E3, there's absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, I guess then, actually before we get into what we've been playing, I guess we'll just make our own news. Have you? Do you have any updates on Fortnite or anything that you want to talk about? Since we'll do like our little weekly update on our regular games. Uh, well, I I've been playing a lot. I still, you know, drop in, play a couple games every day. You know, around 7 o'clock my time central is when the daily challenges reset. It's when the store resets. I go look at the new skins. Uh, I mentioned to you guys earlier this week on, like, the Discord, like, the realization and the absolute, like, back sweat I had of, hey, Fortnite's not out in China yet. Yeah. (laughs) PUBG is, Can right? You, yeah, PUBG is. PUBG's on mobile. Uh, most of like the hackers and all the yeah. fucking horse shit about people trying to say the PUBG community is racist because they want a region lock because 70 plus percent of the reported hackers are from the China region. <laughs> it's like, hey, no, we just don't want to get fucking sniped in the mouth by a guy in a flying fucking Hogwarts car. Yeah. Like, I don't want to have a guy just like teleport to me and smack me with a pan and I die immediately. Yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> but uh like there was a report the other day I saw about Fortnite where they're making like on average two million dollars a day on iOS alone. <sighs> Good Lord. There were <laughs> there were speculations that t- today I saw that when they release the version for Android that they're going to just have it pushed through, you know, Epic games.com instead of through the Google play store. So they don't owe Google any money. Yeah. That that's the smart move. I mean, they've already got their Epic games launcher. They've already got a partner program in place for like big content creators and streamers where you click their link install the free game through the client on PC, they get a mild amount of, you know, support. You know, just like an affiliate link on, like, Amazon. You think... Daniel, but they only get the one-time click payout. Is Daniel Dwyer making a Fortnite documentary? I can't <laughs> imagine he's not going to. I mean, you gotta think of how timely and relevant his no clip stuff has been. Like as soon as they had, um, you know, news for what was it? 
the Rocket League anniversary that yeah. just happened. Warframe. Yeah, the Warframe one, like right before they had their big Tenocon, which we've t- we talked about this, didn't we? I think about like the the insanity of how Warframe came to be from this oh yeah ridiculous trailer for uh, Dark Sector. Yeah. Back when the PS2 was starting, yeah, we definitely talked about that because they were yeah, like, together and everything. The 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 fact that they had this trailer that no one believed was real, like in the pre-launch of PS2 for this Space Ninja and Zero Gravity, and to think that damn near 20 years later they finally have their game out and it's massively successful. Yeah, but yeah, so again, massively successful right before Rocket League. Well, right as Rocket League exploded, when it first came out, they had the No Clip documentary. When the Witcher Three hit a big milestone, they had their Witcher documentary. I I can't imagine he's not already in the was it North Carolina talking to these yeah weird hipsters hillbillies that run Epic. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's got one for Fallout seventy six. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was the thing I was trying to think of. Fallout 76. He uh, had already had all that information and like the background on that, which I need to go ahead and watch that one actually, because I'm curious. I really want to know like the breakdown of work between what was um, Battle Cry Studios in Austin. Yeah. That then became Bethesda Austin or whatever. The, the, the split between them and Bethesda Game Studios proper on Fallout 76. Because because uh, that that studio in Austin was making this weird like PvP game that was kind of like semi steampunky ish looking. I, I think it was called Battle Cry, and they had demos out, and then that game went silent after it was kind of like showed off at E3, and then like two years pass and. Like nobody still had heard anything about it. Oh, it was officially I remember Battle Cry. Yeah, yeah it was a, it's officially dead, and they renamed that studio, which was called Battle Cry, Bethesda Austin or Bethesda South. I don't remember. Yeah, uh, they they officially became a satellite Bethesda game studio, and uh, yeah, they're. I I would imagine they're at least like fifty fifty, if not principal developers on Fallout 76. Yeah. Like, wow. it, it's... it's Well, no, I mean, it's been, you know, enough time for, you know, Bethesda proper to have been working on something. They probably have these guys who were, you know, predominantly multiplayer-focused, you know, come in and work on the backbone and structure of that. Kind of like how... Dude, I remember this game. This yeah. game was going to be rad! It looks cool, yeah. It was like it was kind of like if For Honor wasn't boring. Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> For yeah, Honor the... is going to be a free games of gold. I'm looking forward to yeah, that. Yeah, free games of gold. Yeah, soon. You know what this actually reminds me of? Uh, this, this reminds me of the, the principle, like the idea of after. I, w- I want to say after Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, Arcane yeah. had started on this game that was basically like Assassins versus Templars. Yeah. But it was like an asymmetric multiplayer game where like there was a campaign, the initial, you know, the design documents, who knows how far they ever got with the actual work. Um, but like, yeah, the, the design documents were pretty much like you could, you know, have your campaign be an open lobby and then kind of like how Left 4 Dead 2 did you ever play the 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 PVP in Left 4 Dead 2? No, never did. Never well, like, in that like the Left 4 Dead. Yeah, well, in that one the special zombies yeah. were, right. you know, whenever they would spawn, they would be taken over by one of the, you know, players. Yeah. So it was you versus like random waves of that. So the idea behind this game, I'm trying to look into it, was that it would be if you were playing your you know your single player game, 
they could randomly take over an NPC. So then all of a sudden you just hit this fucking NPC that was just going to, you know, be so much better than everything else and kind of force like a dynamic encounter. And, you know, not to mention the other multiplayer modes they had planned, but it looked cool. And I think they took, yeah, the crossing, that's what it was. I can't believe I remember that guy's name, Rafael Colantonio. Like, <laughs> last week I mentioned that guy's... Yeah, see, there's a lot of the base mechanics I guess they figured out for this in Dishonored. Huh. Like, for, the, you know, the mobility and some of the weaponry and the first-person, like, melee action there. I don't know, like... I think I think we've established that I have encountered and remember a lot of weird random ass games. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> but yeah, so that's kind of what like visually like that battle cry reminded me of. And I'm curious. I'm really curious how Fallout 76 ends up playing. I think it ends up playing worse than all the other Fallout games so far. And is kind of fun. <laughs> well, I imagine it playing like the mechanics of it being drastically better, but at what cost of like your investment in the in the reality there? But I've never been like a big survival game player, you know. I like them, but yeah, I definitely reach a point of like not caring. <laughs> Like, yeah, you mentioned last time, you know, like, hey, yeah, Troll gave me that code for Koenig Exiles, and he looked at it. touched it. (laughs) You know, like, what what am I doing here? As a matter of fact, uh, the Yogscast just started a series on Conan. I watched five minutes of the first episode. (laughs) Oh. I was just like, oh, yeah, this does looks okay. I like well, building. I really like building in games, which is why I need to keep playing Lego Worlds. Because Lego Worlds is pretty rad. Have you uh, thought about giving No Man's Sky a shot? Because yes, I am absolutely going to get No Man's Sky. Because there's a lot of people that that's pretty much the only thing they do now is just go out there and build random, yeah, you know, settlements and fortresses on these random planets, and now they expanded those tools with Next. This was, I mean, this is something I've been saying since No Man's Sky turned out to be a bit of a flop. Was I'm just gonna wait for them to update it or for it to die, whichever happens first. So you know, if it dies, it'll be cheap. I'll play it, enjoy it. Um, if they make it better, which they have, then I'll enjoy it. So I win. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a win-win. Everything's coming up Millhouse for old best in the round. Yeah, I just you know. I, I have plenty of other stuff to play. I don't need to jump onto a game right away. So now I'm just like, all right, yeah, now it's time for me to get it. Just like, you know, yeah. I've been waiting to play uh, Subnautica, get really deep into Subnautica now that it's out. That'll be another one that I get into. Um, yeah, I, I had eyeballed for a while their Astro Near. See, I've been looking at, I think it's Project Zero looks really neat. There's a bunch of them out there. Factorio looks awesome. Yeah, that one looks cool. There's a lot of them, but this one, and No Man's Sky, I like sci-fi. So this one's really up my alley. My uh, roommate was real big into the game. Like, once some of the, like, the more recent updates that weren't next, like the ones right before, like, I think Foundation and Atlas, they all had, like, a project name, each one of the updates. Okay. Like every one of those updates, you know, he came back in and he tried out and the, like the last one is what really added like all the base building as it is. And that's all my roommate would do is just like just get high and just go build bases in like Fallout 4 <laughs> and in No Man's Sky. So he cranked in and he started playing like as soon as the update downloaded cuz he happened to have the day off. He's like, "Man, they really changed everything." Like with that next, he's like, he had to rebuild so much stuff, and he pretty much just kind of like started over. 
to kind of get the the full benefit of trying it all out. But it was funny to me. It still has some of that jank, yeah, of a, a small team of people. Because I think Hello Games is still like less than twenty people. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Because I, th- I think they were twelve when they released uh, No Man's Sky. But, yeah, uh, they were small when they were. Yeah, definitely. And they were putting out the Joe Danger games, and then scaled up by like two people to start working on. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, no Man's Sky. Yeah, see, but yeah, yeah he was... on Hello Games about page, there's like maybe twenty people. Yeah, he, uh, my roommate, he started up and he was playing around uh, with another friend of mine. He uh, bought the game because it was on sale on like PlayStation and Steam, but it's sixty dollars on Xbox. Get fucked, lol. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll it's, it's a wait. brand new release. Yeah, I, but people were salty about it. It is a brand new release. I guess I get what people. I'll probably buy it. I don't know. Right now, I got yeah, plenty of stuff the, to play. Uh, yeah, me too. But uh, he he was playing with my buddy Nick, and they were flying around. They were doing cool stuff, and they were having fun. And my roommate's gonna get off and go do something else. So he goes and he finds a teleport. He's like, "Let me just warp back to my base, and everything will be all right." And it's a loading screen. He's teleporting. And all of a sudden, the teleport just pops out like normal. And he's just floating in space oh. and dying slowly. <laughs> like, oh, no. he's nowhere near his planet. He has no idea where he's at in space to go try to find his body to get his loot once he respawns. <laughs> just all, all that gear that was in his backpack, all, all, the, all the resources, everything. Just randomly, he just gets dumped out in this space and just freezes to death. That sucks. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we were, we were at it for like four hours, and I hadn't dumped anything in a while. I'd just been selling stuff at the store. So he, he kept his money, but like the stuff he had just gotten a hold of, just all gone somewhere out in the, in the deep, dark parts of space, never to be seen again. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, I like No Man's Sky. Uh, did you ever play Starbound? Because that's what that kind of reminds me of. What is that? Starbound. Starbound. Uh, the, I I know uh, the game, but no, I never played it. It's a it's a lot like Terraria, but it's sci-fi. And man, I got deep into that game. I got a video. Yeah. On screen okay. Now. I yeah, love I know this, this game. One. There are very few games I love as much as Starbound. Cause I gotta go back a little bit in the video. I just love like this where he's at now. I don't know if this is built. Actually, this might be built. It might be uh, rather in game already. But yeah, you could build like a giant airship thing. At one point in my playthrough, I had a giant building where I was just going to different planets and meeting different cultures and bringing something back to my building and putting it in like a museum. So. Yeah, I, I, that's what No Man's Sky reminds me of. Being able to go to different planets and discover new things and name new things and yeah, love games like that. I you know, now it now it's out. fun. Now it's fun in No Man's Sky that you can actually have somebody like teleport to where you're at that's and cool. you know see all the dumb names you've made instead of just you know sharing screenshots <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that just man, that sounds great. <laughs> I really want No Man's Sky. But, but uh, going back a little bit to Fallout seventy six, uh, there was a new story from like the last week or so about Todd Howard saying, you know, he's he's pretty sure they're done with letting other studios touch their you know their main series proper. Really? So all those people you know that have had this. Awkward hard on for New Vegas too. Yeah. Unless uh unless you know Bethesda buys Obsidian anytime soon, which Obsidian has gone so like self sufficient independent in the past few years. I don't think that's happening. <laughs> they're just they're just never gonna see it. And a lot of people were sad. <laughs> yeah, well, this will be a hot take, but uh New Vegas wasn't that great. <laughs> it's the the thing 
I like some of the base mechanics they had as far as playing compared to going directly from Fallout 3 to, you know, Fallout New Vegas. And, uh, you know, everybody just wants that kind of writing again. Like, the game was a hot mess. And it was a hot mess for eight to eight months to almost a year. And even then, there were still systems where that shit was just dumping all the time and crashing on consoles. Yeah. Well, people but to be want... fair, they did it in 18 months. <laughs> well, people, what they really want is Fallout 1 and 2. And if you really want that, go play fucking Wasteland. That's what that yeah, is. Yeah, I, I started playing Wasteland talking about another topic coming up is some of the random shit I played on Game Pass. Wasteland 2 is on the Game Pass. Have you played it on Game Pass? I played it on the Xbox for probably about 30 minutes. Does it play okay on... Uh, it... On... That seems like a PC it, game to me. It It is. I mean, it controls well, but for whatever reason, that game looks like microwaved garbage. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like, it literally looks like I just booted up the menus from Fallout Tactics. <laughs> yeah, no, it absolutely does. That's what people want Fallout to be. Yeah. Well, it's it's like the thing I talk to a lot of people about, about all the people that, you know, like the, the drastically changing opinions over time of people's stance on Fallout 4. Uh, yeah, I love Fallout 4. It's like the people that wanted, you know, branching story arcs and, you know, personal agency in their story choices. The the problem Fallout 4 had is it's a half measure. They tried to keep too much of the standard Bethesda formula, but didn't commit far enough to the voice protagonist to make it matter. I mean, they They tried to leave... Did they try Skyrim to leave too much have RPG. any of those things? Well, know. Skyrim had a little bit more of the, you know, your your choices at least in that moment matter, except for the fact that once you complete that quest line, everyone is like, hey, it's the Dragonborn. Like, I just killed, like, your Jarl of your town, and I run this shit, bro. Why aren't you reacting? Yeah. You know? So even even then, even in New Vegas, when you get to the end of all those quest lines, except for an occasional comment here and there, none of your decisions really matter. The so, best you get is like that compilation screenshot at the end. But as far as like the moment to moment dialogue of you interacting with people, people yeah. got so mad at the four choices and most of the time two or three of the choices basically <laughs> ended up being the same thing because they doubled their workload of writing of both NPC responses and now the recording and dialogue you have to do for the player character. Right. They they try to keep their finger in both pots too much. So here's my thing about Fallout 4 that I don't understand why everyone gets so upset. The So Bethesda like if you think back to to Elder Scrolls, the Skyrim, uh, before that was um, oh my Morrowind. God. Mor- was Morrowind. Well, before it, that? No. So Oblivion. it goes: Skyrim, Oblivion, Morrowind, uh, yeah, but Daggerfall. Starting Arena. at like Morrowind, I don't remember there being a lot of like player agency and branching story paths in that because there weren't. No, Oblivion. But you still had some choices in your dialogue and Did your you? abilities. I don't really remember that. Like, I don't remember that being a thing. Maybe I just wasn't looking for that at the time. Well, but, no, go ahead. Sorry. But, well, yeah, my point being is that, like, Bethesda has always been, in my opinion, great at world building and they've getting better at gameplay. They're great at making an open world and Morrowind was good. Morrowind was a really interesting place. Oblivion, I feel like, was better because you ended up going into crazy places like essentially hell and things like that. And then the gameplay also got better there. And then Skyrim was perfect as far as gameplay and the world and everything. 
And I think that Fallout's gone the same way. Fallout 3 was a great game with good gameplay. New Vegas was a misstep, but that wasn't Bethesda. And that's why Todd Howard saying we're not letting that happen again, I think that's great. I think that's brilliant. Because Fallout 4, gameplay was superb. I love that world. I get people don't like the pipe pistol things. Like, everybody says, oh, everybody's just got pipe pistols. They're all pipe pistols. Well, that makes sense for the world. You know, people, not everyone's going to have super nice weapons. They're going to make their own stuff. But I do like that you get to customize that pipe pistol a whole bunch. It, like, yeah, the... If you just look at the timeline, it just makes sense that they got away from that whole branching, less telltale, more... I don't know. Not Call of Duty, but the shooting and the gameplay mechanics got better. Yeah, the the thing for me that probably would have been a better where where people didn't have that experience they had with Fallout 3 where Fallout 3 just kind of like you know, just blew people's minds with what it could be cuz that was like one of the first like well-made big open world RPGs that yeah. came out on consoles and just also having to be awesome. And was also cool on PC. But the thing is, you know, it's hard to make another one of those and it had that same impact. Right. You only get that once. But the thing for all the fucking, you know, pen and paper fucking role play dorks is like, if you're trying to have, you know, fucking player agency or, you know, feel like your choices matter or feel like you're being part of that character, get out your fucking pen and paper. Like... (laughs) Go play Wasteland. Go play Tyranny. Go play Pillars of Eternity. Go. There's so many games out there. Why does this studio, who maybe they're just not good at that, so they don't want to do that. They want to deliver an awesome gameplay experience and an awesome world, and that's what they're going to be good at. I would rather or, Bethesda to say, we're not good at that stuff. We don't want to do it. Fine. That makes sense. I get that. Yeah. You're not going to ask uh, a guy who specializes in bread to go make you a steak. That's stupid. Yeah. He probably could. He could probably pull it off. But he's going to make you the best bread you ever had. Yeah, or the thing I always think about is, do they want to make that game? I don't think they do. You know, there was an interview I was listening to from a game developer, and I think the games cast from Kind of Funny Today also had a guy as a developer. Okay, I was wondering who that was. The amount of time you have to spend on a game, even a budget slapped together in fucking, you know, unity. And you've already got, you know, pre-rendered assets still getting that thing up and running can take a long time. Yeah. Now think of a game like fallout four, where they had recorded just dialogue for two and a half years. (laughs) Yeah. You've got to really fucking love the thing to spend your time on it like that. Yeah, and, and you have to record all those branching paths. That's crazy. Some games do yeah. it. Detroit did it, but then Detroit doesn't have great shooting mechanics, does it? Yeah. But uh, yeah, like things like Divinity, you know that that's yeah. the. It's like the thing with you know The Witcher Three. They're the exceptions to the rule of the the passion meeting the cost of living in the places they made that game meets the talent at the right time. Yeah. You know, like, not everything can be top 1% every fucking time. Right. Yeah, they are kind of an anomaly. Yeah. Because, you know, Larry and the guys that make Divinity, they crowdfund all their games still. Okay. So they crowdfunded Original Sin, and they crowdfunded Original Sin 2. So, yeah, that's the reason why Original Sin has, you know, or 2 has so much more, like, voice dialogue. Because people paid and they for took, it already. Yeah. They had a guaranteed stream of people that wanted that, and they could handle that. Now, in the case of, like, Fallout 4, as far as this, like, the story they told being more meaningful, I imagine if they had stayed where they were with their standard, like, Skyrim and Fallout 3 style mechanics of their storytelling, it probably would have kind of appeased some of those role play dorks that talk about my immersion, you know, <laughs> that horse shit. 
uh, they probably would have been a lot happier with the standard dialogue tree. But I imagine, you know, they're at the point where I kind of hope they push all the way forward to the other angle of where they're at here of going more in the feeling of the Witcher. Yeah. You know, make a set character and tell their story. You can still have a lot of, you know, deep personal RPG story elements and mechanics and make that voice protagonist matter because they're a person. Right. They're not this fucking janky jack of all trades self insert. <laughs> you know, the like, like the thing I always had a problem with, you know, prolonged playing of Breath of the Wild, authored content. You know, focus more on the experience you want. Like, absolutely. You said Fallout 4 was. It felt like they didn't commit far enough to stick to their roots or try the new thing. And so there's these weird moments of jank. But again, no no game Bethesda would have made would have made these fucking pen and paper dorks that want everything to right. matter, that want everything to you know, like give them fucking eight dialogue choices and let them all be different. <laughs> And that it's sounds like, that sounds lovely, but it's just I don't know. We're gonna have to wait till Fallout. Like, if they were to make that, I would guarantee that that's gonna be like well past the next Elder Scrolls. Like, it's gonna be a long time before yeah. that's realistically possible. Or they would have to go back and make a much simpler mechanic game, like Divinity. You know, where they can reuse a lot more of the same assets. Yeah, they have less. You know. You know, physics simulations, rendering pipelines, FOV to worry about. They so can just get straight to the meat of the RPG mechanics. And personally, you know, having played a bunch of original Sin and I tried uh, Divinity 2, it's like, I mean, unless you want to fucking click a bunch of shit and wait your turn. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, like the, the it's, it's not the experience I was wanting at the time. I think it's both of those games, as vintage as he, you know, one and two are fucking absolutely fantastic. And if you like slower paced, chilled out, methodical games, yeah, go for it. Yeah, and that's just the point. Like, Fallout 4 isn't that game, but there's plenty of other stuff out there that is. So go for that. Yeah. But Fallout 4 is the popular one, and they want to be mad at it. Yeah, pretty much. So, that that's that. Random tangent aside. <laughs> Very random tangent aside. <laughs> uh, but I guess we can oh. get over... Go ahead. No, I, I just saw this poor man get lasered to death. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, we'll get over to a little bit of what I'm playing this week and apparently going to be playing tomorrow. Um, But I've been playing The Division a little bit. I finished up what I needed to with The Dark Zone. So I just needed to get, uh, I needed to clear out some more of the, uh, I already blocked it out of my head, the monuments or whatever, and the dark zone, which are just little dungeons, and I love this clip right here. This guy taking this rogue agent out. <laughs> That's great. Oh, fairly doing division tech farming. But uh, yeah, man, I tell you, man, the division, the PvP in that game is so intense. I love it so much. I was... Uh, I mean, I've explained how it works on this podcast, right? How you have to extract your gear that you find. Yeah. So I, I was, I had a bunch of really great gear, and I was going to extract it. And if you kill so many people as a rogue agent, if you kill a bunch of agents who are just, you know, trying to trying to get the gear and get out, um, if you kill a bunch of them, a manhunt starts. So I was on top of a roof like, trying to extract my gear. And I could see on my map somebody who was part of a manhunt. He was very close to my building. <laughs> it was scary. And then when I actually was able to extract, I left the building and he was outside. But he was not rogue anymore. But just, I was following him around because I could tell he was kind of sizing me up. That's kind of a fun part of the Dark Zone is sizing each other up. Because I'm just sitting there with my, my AA-12, my automatic shotgun, just like, come on, bud. Come on. <laughs> just <laughs> egging him on. Come on. Every once in a while, I'd pull out my turret, just kind of stand there. 
Like, you want some? <laughs> and he did not. But, uh, yeah, I finished out my that shield that I needed to get. I have the first four shields. Now I, the underground is the one I have to work on. Um, I'll probably work on that a little bit. But, yeah, I've just I've been having a bat blast playing the Division. I got a new Marksman Rifle exotic, the heal. Um, I can't remember what it really does. But there's another component to it. There's another weapon. There's a few exotics in the game that work off of each other, which I don't have any set of two yet. But I will soon. Yeah, it sucks. You can now, a rogue agent. Is that the heal, like, medical or Ric Flair? <laughs> It's one's called the heel, and I think one's called the devil. The devil's heel, maybe. I think that's what it is. But it's yeah, it gives you like a bunch of crit damage or something. I can't remember. I just got it and then like logged off. Yeah, I I really enjoy sniping in that game, so it's nice to have an exotic sniper rifle. Yeah, all I could think of when you said heel, and it was a march. Yeah. It's like, I hope that's spelled H-E-E-L. It is. I, every time you get a headshot, it says, Woo! That, oh, <laughs> just, man. <laughs> just cue Ric Flair. I will love that so much. <laughs> I might. Just I mean, Ric Flair it... needs the money. How hard could yeah, it be, right. Ubisoft? No, think... Getting beaten up in a drunk argument with his own family by his daughter. <laughs> I think he's doing fine. He's doing good now. And, uh, gosh, speaking about going back to an abusive relationship. Uh, Destiny? Yeah. I played Destiny some yesterday. Did a bunch of stuff. Did the dailies. Did some of the bounties, which are fine. But tomorrow starts the Solstice of Heroes camp trailer, campaign, whatever. Not trailer. This is a trailer. Uh, but it's the big summer event. And I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> this stupid you game. Creepy masochist, you. <laughs> oh my god, you had July 31st. Uh, it hurts so good. It what the hell was that fucking weird fucking Han Solo pipe pistol looking gun he had a second ago? Like, oh, what the hell? Drang? Sturm, maybe? I, Sturm, yeah. I, Sturm and Drang, it's a... Uh, it is a hand cannon that, with Drang, you get a bunch of kills with it, and it actually adds rounds to Sturm's magazine. It kind of overflows the magazine, but they overflow rounds to extra damage. It's an exotic. It's a very powerful exotic, too. Apparently, a lot of people don't use, but I love it. So I'll be going back to Destiny. I'll, we'll be able to talk about that next week, how disappointed I am with it. Uh... <laughs> I might end up going back to Division. I don't know. They added the bounty thing, which is fun. I played some PvP, and I'm bad at it now. So now I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, I kind of want to get good at Destiny PvP again. Yeah, didn't they just talk about like kind of doing some time-to-kill balance changes yep. and stuff like that? They sure are, which would be nice. I would like that. So let's see. Destiny 2's PvP is about to give faster time to kill. Uh, about 25% boosts auto rifles. Let's see. Yeah, they're just they're boosting a lot of things, which is good. Yeah. Apparently, they're doing a year two combat reveal on August 7th. Hopefully, that's showing That'd us what the new uh, weapon slots are like. Yeah, should be. Yeah. Again, my big thing still, like, I would love to enjoy Destiny 2 PvP, but it's just like, I never want to touch the PvE stuff, and I would always still be at a disadvantage on PvP. It's like, no, like so many of those, well, I I, guess they changed it a fair amount. Yeah, I mean, I pretty regularly, like, one of my favorite things whenever I started a new Destiny character was as soon as I get access to the Crucible, I go play with my white or blue weapons because I wreck people. Yeah. I love it. It was just, I I guess they changed a lot. I didn't spend that much time in Destiny 2's PvP, but it was a fucking problem, Destiny 1. 
It's like, oh, hey, yeah. your your random special bonuses still apply, although your level doesn't matter. Well, that was, I believe, mainly an Iron Banner thing. And I wish well, no, like I said, I'd play in regular Crucible and guys with the thorn. Oh, hey, I've got a poison oh, gun. I got or, you. Or, hey, yeah. the, the, was it the Sunbringer or whatever, the sniper rifle that was like a flame that just recharged ammo? Probably. Like, uh, the last game I remember playing in Destiny 1 PvP was on, like, one of the Mars maps that has, like, just tight corridors. And I had, like, a 20-kill streak because people kept coming down this one hallway and it was just, bam, headshot, bam, body, bam, headshot. And that's a thing with those games. Like, right now, the Division has a quote-unquote problem with the SMG, the house, because it's kind of the meta. It's the best thing to use right now. It's an exotic that just wrecks everything. And that Destiny's got the same thing. It usually has a set amount of weapons that are really good. But then you got guys that will go in there. Like, I like going in there with uh, uh, the city, which is uh, New City, maybe? I think it's called New City. And uh, Division, not Division, damn it, Destiny 2. And I'll wreck people with it. There's just a bunch of little weapons that you can use to just wreck people. Like, for me, the the Guided Star in Destiny 2 is, like, one of the best PvP weapons. I've got hundreds of kills with it on Xbox. So, it's kind of meta, but also if you can learn how to handle a weapon and hand, and know its limits, you can do really well in PvP, which I, I enjoy that. I think that's really cool. The Division, I just get my ass handed to me. Destiny, that doesn't happen. <laughs> So yeah, I uh, I think yeah the the big hang up I had with Destiny Two P was like, oh wow this is fucking slow. <laughs> like it's, like it can be move, yeah well just raw movement speed and like the feel it's like I got so used to like I think I transitioned to Destiny Two right out of Titanfall Two. Oh. That's a problem. Yeah, I can see that. It's like, oh, hey, smooth movement mechanics, and, you know, hey, I I just keep running. I don't run out of breath and have to stop sprinting every now and then. Because in the PvP on Destiny 2, don't you run out of stamina and running? No. I don't think. Or maybe it was just... I think I remember what my big problem with that was. There was no option to set crouch to be hold instead of toggle. Okay. So then that fucked up like my entire like memory of playing Destiny 1 and you know slide into somebody with a shotgun and stand up just body them in the chest and keep moving. So you'd come to a stop and you have to remember to uncrouch every single time. It wasn't a a smooth transition. It was it was weird trying to play Destiny 2 on the PlayStation when it launched because it had less control options than Destiny 1 did when it launched. Oh, like, okay. There were, there were, I went back and watched old footage of Destiny 1 day one, and there were actually less settings for your controller <laughs> in Destiny 2 than in Destiny 1 launch. That's weird. Yeah, like it was like... Yeah, I get you. I get that, you know, Vicarious Visions or whoever it was that did the uh, PC port fucking nailed it. But, hey, you guys are, like, forgetting just the general basics of every other fucking first-person shooter on a console in the past two years <laughs> in your settings menu. Yeah. Hey, it buddy. was... And then the... Yeah, it... it... It was annoying. Yeah, the meta is always changing in that game. Like for a while, it was Sunshot. Um, I'm not sure what it is right now. Um, Better Devils always won. This is one of my games. I'm not even sure if I did well in this. This is competitive. Yeah, I, I like competitive. But uh, yeah, Iron Banner used to be where you would have like every bonus of your. I can't remember what the hell they take away. Well, they, the light level is what was determined in Iron Banner. Everyone's light level is kind of the same in PvP, unless it's Iron Banner, but it's not that way anymore. But I enjoy it. Um, 
You should give it another shot. You have it on PlayStation? Yeah. Damn it. Get it on PC. No. <laughs> I, I only turn on my PC to masturbate, sir. <laughs> Why would I buy it on PC? I'd, right. I'd feel like I was cheating on my right hand. Are you, are you on your PC right now? Uh, let's not, uh... <laughs> oh, let's God. Not... Oh, oh, God. On the internet, they don't know that I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> uh, okay, well, <laughs> let's transition out of that quickly. Hey, <laughs> just to get back to what we've been playing this week, now that we're done with yeah, our ignore, weekly... Ignore the sticky floor and just stare, stare forward, right. don't look down. Yeah, sticky floors. You know what sticky floors are bad for? Tennis. Tennis, yes. Mario Tennis. You know what's also particular. bad for tennis? What? Terrible single-player content. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I would well, imagine so. It is... Like, the depth of the mechanics in Mario Tennis Aces, I truly appreciate. It It's really well made. It's hard for me sometimes. I haven't played it since, like, that first week I got it. I got about halfway through the story mode and then I just got sidetracked into, you know, season five of Fortnite and a couple other things. But the, the most egregious thing about it is like when you're going to some of these levels, you know, each, each little level is a challenge and they have, you know, like a specific routine. Some of them are just basic tutorial levels, teaching you how to do this new thing. And then you got to repeat that new thing a few times. Uh, And there's like a boss fight that makes you really get good at that new thing. But the problem is, if you fail, all right, it loads. There's some failure text. You just got to smash your way through. Then you got to go back to that spot again and hit X or whatever. Skip the dialogue. Wait for another loading screen. And, oh, wait, you fucked up again because this game's actually really fucking hard. Loading screen, text that you failed, same conversation every time. Start back up, text, 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 skip. Loading screen, try it again. (laughs) It's so fucking frustrating that there's not just a, hey, just hit this button to restart. Yeah. That sounds frustrating. Yeah, because some of these levels... You know, the challenge missions that give you, like, new rackets. Because you have, like, this one has, like, the that wood racket there. There's the base racket you start with. The next area after this, there's a mirror racket you get for fighting in a ghost house. And there's, like, an ice racket I think I just unlocked last time I was playing. But, yeah, the challenge you to do some crazy shit, like, keep a volley of, like, 300 going <laughs> oh wow and that take that takes a while of like you just like bounce back bounce back bounce back bounce back and i think there's certain ways to get like bonus points and anytime you can kind of just smash the ball and score like you normally would for tennis and kind of reset the volley okay the longer the volleys go the kind of more complicated the ai gets so sometimes it's in your best bet if you're starting to get really fucking tired because you're on edge at all times because this game's actually idiotically hard <laughs> for a fucking tennis game. Jeez, and then, yeah, it yeah. looks like it. Now, do the rackets give you any benefit? Like, are they different perks or anything? They, like, that's the thing a lot of people are really complaining about. And I don't have any experience with the previous Mario Tennis games that had like i guess more interesting single player content because like the last one they made before this apparently had none of the single player stuff and people were really upset because the one before that had this whole like adventure mode and all this cool stuff and rpg kind of stuff like you level up you know playing but then the leveling up just eventually just gives you like a little boost to the stat a little boost to the stat a little boost to the stat you know on each level up and then apparently at one point you keep leveling up, but your stats never go past whatever Mario's like actual stats once you're playing the you know, the oh, multiplayer mode. Okay, yeah. And you can only play as Mario, so people are annoyed with that that you can't choose anybody else. It's only Mario. All Mario all the time. 
Well, then do the but rackets do anything, like the mirror racket? They have better, like, you know, resistance to damage, uh, power to hit stuff with, you know, okay. like basic stuff. Like, but no, they're like, like, interesting perk or anything like that? Not not one thing. They're just wow. more rackets. And the thing is, That's you can racket. adjust, like, your... Yeah, it is a racket. You can... <laughs> You can adjust your racket order so you can make sure your best racket is up front, but then that puts you at risk of, you know, if the enemy breaks your racket, oh, then okay. now you're down in your effectiveness. So you might want to see how far you can get with your basic starter racket, you know, and then if that breaks, you've still got a good racket to go after it. But uh, I don't know, like... I I heard a few people call this, you know, 2018's arms, where it's <laughs> where it's an insanely well made Nintendo game, but you know, three months out, no one's talking about it anymore. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I both? love a lot of the presentation. I love the couple of games I've played online with other people. Had a few problems there. You know, because, oh, hey, Nintendo's internet. <laughs> Their online services always seem to be, you know, subpar. Yeah. Because, again, it's PvP, which, you know, in a direct competitive game, that's actually probably the best thing they could choose. This looks frustrating. Yeah, <laughs> it's... You know what also makes it more frustrating? Is, oh my Lord. you know, not using the Switch that often. Yeah. And still mentally having to readjust to the button inputs. Yep. Even though I'm using a PS4 controller when I play my Switch. Did you see uh, Hori is coming out with a controller with an actual D-pad? Yeah, but you saw the the downsides to it, right? Yeah, but I don't care because I only play mine undocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it pretty much only works when it's slid in and directly connected to the Switch. Yeah, doesn't have problem. the doesn't have the gyro stuff. Doesn't have the HD rumble, but it's twenty five dollars. Yeah, like if that if you just want a D pad and not have to pull apart your Joy Con and do one of the shell mods that's out there and available. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Cause yeah, there's a lot of little ribbon cables and screws and clips. But yeah, like this is one of those games where. I, there are some people that really enjoy the single player stuff, and like I said, I I can respect how good if you sit and focus on it, it makes you at the game. But then you still have to sit down and play that game. Yeah. And unless you know you've got someone else to play with that's at a similar skill level, you're either gonna get smashed or you're gonna smash. <laughs> It's yeah. gonna it's gonna be a, a a route either way, both ways. And it sucks. I would probably get this if I had, you know, friends over all the time or had, you know, local friends with a switch or I think even then I don't know if we'd play it that much because of Mario Kart. <laughs> well, also like this game, unless you turn it into like the simple mode, is really fucking complicated. Oh jeez. Like like it is much much like uh, Arms, it is basically like a fighting game. Yeah. But you're playing tennis. Well, Arms is pretty simple. Yeah, but you know when you've got the Joy-Con separated and the people I've seen that are really good at that game with, you know, flick control, and you know timing. Yeah. It's all about re- reaction timing and then knowing what what moves to do in the right scenario to have the best benefit. Because there are like that zone shot, that zone defense stuff, the slow mo stuff, the jumping in the air, like knowing how to set those up, yeah. knowing how to drop the ball short if you see them far back, knowing how to keep your meter up so you can just burn it whenever and just smash them hard and break their racket and then end the game. Well, like, there was it, a lot of like different shots and stuff like that. I remember from the demo. Yeah, it's. It's it's way too complicated to be a fun, just basic party game. 
if anybody in that party knows how to play it and the other people don't. Yeah. It's not a real pick up and play party affair. That's too bad because it could have been. But like I said, there is a simple mode, but I mean, how many people are going to know to switch over to that every time and actually play it? Yeah. I know, like, Mario Kart, I got some of my friends to play that, and they all want to buy a Switch. And this could have been the same thing, where they play this and, like, oh, yeah, this is great, I want to get a Switch now. But apparently it's not. I think Super Mario Party might be the next game like that. Hopefully. Hopefully. But you can't play the board game online. It's only a a selection of mini-games. So essentially... Super Mario Party on the Switch when you're playing it online, unless there's people at your house, is just going to be like a less good WarioWare. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Nintendo. They want everyone to be social and near each other. Can't, well, can't be is. online and social. Yeah. Well, they're they're in a country where it's hard to not do that because everyone's on top of each other in the cities that they're based in. Yeah. <laughs> But one day they'll figure it all out. See, the next thing you've been playing was uh, Gungeon. Into the Gungeon. Yes, sir. They just had the big Advanced Gungeons and Dragons. There you go. Some nice puns. <laughs> Update. Puns, they have them. Yes. Puns and guns. Yes. They have plenty of both. What is it? Is this a but, hunter? Uh, 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 that looks like an alternate skin. Yeah. For somebody. It's a revolver. So I'm thinking. I don't know. That's a regular gun. That's not a. That's not a starter weapon. It has an ammo count. Sawed off. Who has a sawed off? Sawed off is the, the outlaw. So this yeah, this is the outlaw then. Okay. Because she's a blonde lady in like the and orange the hunter... jumpsuit. The hunter has like a hamster. The has a little dog that you know picks up all your loot for you once the waves cleared. Is it a dog? I don't remember. It's been a while. No, that's a gun that turns people into chickens. It transmogrifies. That's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of weird, cool stuff. There's a gun that shoots tables, apparently. <laughs> Just cause. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the the Dungeons and Dragons. I hadn't played this game since it came out on the PS4, so it'd been almost a year, and they had had you know some quality of life updates in between. So I don't know how much is in the one big update and how right. much is from you know just over time. But especially, I imagine a lot of those changes I I mentioned on the Discord were like really beneficial to playing this game portably. It's right. like they added the option to where you can set it to when the enemies are cleared in their room, you walk faster. So you can, you know, backtrack and traverse a lot quicker if you're not fighting. So yeah, these like this walk speed you see here is an option. Otherwise they walk slow as fuck. Oh yeah, they slow down. Yeah. Uh, They added, uh, at the end of each one of the chambers, there's a save and quit button now. And save slots. So you can, you know, say you finish the first chamber. And you see the little face, save and exit. If you don't want to fuck up that run and start a different run, you just switch save slots in the settings. And hit start and go play around. And when you feel like getting back to that other save state, swap back to that and hit continue. That is uh, nice. Yeah, it's it's interesting. They uh, added all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah, it's a mailbox that shoots newspapers. <laughs> I found the oh, gun. And the first gun. Yeah. The uh, first gun I found on my first run. I only played one run because, as I mentioned, I got so far in my one run. The first first try back, it took me you know like twenty minutes, and then I had to go to sleep because I was dumb and try to start it up right before I went to bed. 
Yeah. <laughs> and this is a, a high focus game, but I got to, you know, the fourth chamber first try back. I only ever actually beat a run once the last time I'd played Gungeon. And then my PS4 controller died and I got killed by a basic scrub. <laughs> <laughs> Feels that bad. Sucks. But yeah, uh, I liked the addition of the reticle because I don't remember or I just may not have looked the on-screen reticle like you yeah. see there of the crosshair. I don't remember that being an option the first time I played on the PS4. Huh. Yeah, I don't think it is. I wonder if that's on Xbox. It's, a, it's, it's an option game. there now with, you know, at least with, you know, Gungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I don't remember that being uh, a thing. I don't know. Yeah. They have, like, auto-aim sensitivities now for when you're doing the twin stick part. They have different reticles you can equip. So if you don't like that one, there's a couple different, you know, crosshairs you can swap between. Uh, yeah, like, so much of, you know, the quality of life of a game that's just based on individual runs and just going at it. There's all sorts of weird secrets in all these random generated dungeons. Oh, yeah. Once you know, like the, the basic patterns you come across, you can figure it out. The options give you the choice between the loot tables for original and Dungeons and dragons, which is cool. So you can play with, you know, the more expanded, and higher drop rates of stuff in dragons or go back to the pretty sparse, you know. Yeah. I I have a feeling at least with the since I played on the, the dragons lip table, I wanna say they increase the effectiveness or the probability of the pilot's fucking lockpick to actually work. Oh, that would be nice. Well, he's actually killing this boss pretty quick. Oh yeah, like the people that know how to play this game, and if you know the patterns, well, oh hey, that, ammo the condo. weapon seems way more effective. Because for yeah. me, bosses were always extremely hard to kill. Not even because of like their the way they attack or anything, just because it seemed like weapons never did damage. Yeah, the the ammo conda was actually fucking busted when this game. It first came out. Oh, you talked about that. Yeah. Like, this thing was so fucking OP. <laughs> to the point where I was, you know, I, I think I mentioned it last time, like, that feeling of sadness when you finally unsubscribe from a subreddit about right. a game you just absolutely love. I remember that being one of the last things I saw on the Gungeon subreddit was, hey, they finally fixed, you know, the ammo conda because I want to say on each chamber, there's a potential for a different boss. There's like a group of bosses that could potentially be at this chamber and it's not guaranteed you hit a run with the ammo conda. But when you did, you know, back in the day you were fucked. You know? Yeah. The gumball machine or the ammo, whatever that is, the little heart piece, machine i think is new i don't remember the gumball machine yeah i don't remember that either because they added one of those at the end of the chambers so to the left of the the elevator out is the save and quit face button and to the right was yeah the gumball right there hmm. uh um, i gotta play more of this yeah it's it's fucking fun i, I first love- gun i found shot pine cones that were grenades. Okay. <laughs> I love games like this where, like, they didn't need to do this. Gungeon was a great game. And they just, I think they saw it and, like, well, we could do better. <laughs> and they did better. Yeah. And they made it more ridiculous because there was already some really silly guns. Oh, yeah. And some cool, cool moments. But I think they added a couple you know, enemy types, a couple more boss types, a whole bunch of guns. Uh, but yeah, man, it's... 
And it's actually it's kind of funny. We're going to end up talking about this a little bit later. I'm kind of tired of games like this. Like the yeah. roguelite, just go through the dungeon, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting tired of them. Dungeon? Nah. Dungeon, I'll still play. Well, I think today I saw an article about a game we talked about last week, Moonlighter. Oh, yeah. I played the hell out of Moonlighter. They just had an update today that expanded, like, the floor patterns. There's new floor patterns. It said, like, there's 100 new, like, you know, instance floor patterns you can come across. Yeah, there's a big update for Moonlighter today, apparently. And I almost posted it to you, and then I forgot because it worked. <laughs> but yeah, I have fatigue for, you know, lackluster roguelikes. Yeah, exactly. I just, it's not, I guess I shouldn't say it's roguelikes. I've, I'm tired of, it's, yeah, exactly, lackluster ones. You're You're tired of mediocrity. Yeah, July, more new shop tutorial. I think that's already out. Oh, shit, they're going to do New Game Plus? I didn't know there was a roadmap for Moonlighter. Oh, yeah. New feature, familiars, custom game mode, new type of enemy, mini bosses, Halloween themed decorations. Cool. I don't know. I don't see an update for today. I'll check their Twitter. Or at least they posted about this info today. It popped up in the oh, news I feed. See. A hundred new room patterns, special post boss room, new armor scans, new visual effects. So this is oh yeah, today. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah, a hundred new rooms. Good lord. I'm glad this is a thing, because I'm only halfway through this game. Hmm. Post boss room. Oh, after defeating a boss in a dungeon, you can re-enter his chamber to find it crawling with monsters. Awesome! It's the first time I played through, I went back to... Th- this is one of those games where when you complete like the first stage and you go back to it much later, it's way easier. So I was like, cool, I'm going to fight that boss again to get a bunch of loot. Got to his chamber, nothing there. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, great. Well, apparently they changed that because now you can go back and it's going to have a bunch of monsters. So that's cool. Upgrade armor, new visual effects. Awesome. New in-game tutorials. DLC backer weapon. Very cool. But yeah, going back to Gungeon, not I was actually looking at the person no, playing here. That. I don't care anymore. I well, care. I was going to say, the other <laughs> thing I noticed, they added with one of the updates, Gungeon. But this guy is playing a speed run. Yeah. They have a built-in speedrun mode now. Built-in speedrun mode? What is that yeah, mean? that's why it has that timer up there counting. And he ran into an NPC just talking oh. about the challenge mode. Huh. Yeah, there, there's a, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff here, man. I, 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 I just loved the times when I could find the mini gun. Oh, that just. Like, you would just fire it one way, and it would just throw you across the fucking screen. (laughs) So so I was just shooting bullets, you know, for mobility. And that's kind of what... It's kind of the only reason I think I beat the the dragon at the end. Though the final boss is a giant drag gun. Thus the name Gungeons and Drag Guns. But, uh, yeah, it was just like every time the guy would throw something at me. I had one of the special abilities you unlock. Like, there are some special abilities that fire a blank to clear off the projectiles when you flip a table. So then if you have a gun that fires tables <laughs> and then you flip a table, you now have unlimited, you know, bullet clearing abilities bait until you run out of the ammo. Okay. There's so many cool things in this game. And I want to... I'm off the next few days, so I think I'm going to do at least another run probably tomorrow. Have you played Moonlighter? I have not. It's one of those ones I was looking at. Is that a 11-bit studios did that? Mm. Are they publishing that? No, this is published by Chucklefish. Oh, yeah, Chucklefish. Which pretty much they always make good stuff. 
Oh, 11 Bit Studios. Yeah. Okay, that's the. I just saw it on the on the screen. What the hell? Developer Digital Sun, publisher 11 Bit. Why did I think this was a Chucklefish thing? Well, oh, Dungeons Chucklefish. Yeah. Okay, my bad. I'll shut up. <laughs> yeah, this game it is 110 percent worth it. Like I don't remember the last time I enjoyed a game quite this much. I need to get back on it. See, this is why I almost don't want to play Destiny. Some games are just... <laughs> so, some games are actually fun from start to finish when you play them. Yeah. Yeah, New Game Plus. Move that over. I don't know if you can even read that. New Game Plus, new group of items, dimensional weapons, new type of items, amulets, new feature, familiars, custom game mode... Have mini bosses. I'm assuming the Halloween theme directions means that must be decorations must that must be up October. I would assume. Yeah, that's a 2018 roadmap. Yeah, so new game plus we should get soon. That's cool. That is super exciting. <laughs> I'm glad I f you told me about that. All right. So any more about Gungeon? Hello. All right, Discord is crapped out for a sec. Oh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Good. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So, uh, I guess in a not as good a game as uh, Resident Evil HD, you also played. Yeah, I uh, I installed a bunch of stuff from Game Pass on my Xbox. And I tried out the Game Pass initially, like right after E3, because there was like a there's like a week where it was on sale, like a month was a dollar. Yeah. And so I said, "Fuck it, I've spent a dollar worse." You know, I've got scars from spending money poorly. <laughs> but uh, I thought, you know, I saw Resident Evil Two, the remake of E3, and I saw this, you know, HD Resident Evil is like. I know if I sat down, I still remember Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2 well enough to basically speed run them first try. And then I forgot, oh no, <laughs> this play is like Resident Evil still. <laughs> yeah, I see that. That's the, the thing I saw, like the, the weird take shit way too personally dorks got mad that you know the new resident evil 2 the remake is a remake and yes, not just a, an God. up res and i got far enough into uh this i didn't play very long just because i knew i was probably just gonna you know just be hurt by nostalgia from this i think the reaction you had is probably the same i just had where i went <gasps> I want to play this. And then I just, <laughs> I saw the camera <laughs> angles and whatnot change. I was like, <gasps> never mind. <laughs> you know, you know, it did it for me because I knew I wanted to start up and I wanted to be, uh, you know, I wanted to be Jill just because I knew whatever happened, I was going to get at least far enough to hear Barry say, you, the master of unlocking. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like right at the beginning, once you see the cut scene of the first zombie biting the guy and you pull a shotgun out off the wall and the floor tries to kill you, Barry hands you the lockpick. He's like, I saved this for you, the master of unlocking. <laughs> it's weird. Like the, the, the bad translation read poorly. <laughs> I hate that stuff. It's like, well, it was just poorly translated. Yeah, but some motherfucker had to do it. Like, <laughs> he could have fixed it. Yeah. That just, was the difference between just, just a raw it. translation and a localization expert. Yeah. But, uh, I, the, the, the longer I played in this, which was honestly maybe 20 minutes from start to finish, oh I was like, oh my god, like, the camera it, angle changes. Yeah. Every fucking step, I was like, I am so glad Resident Evil 2 is not this because Resident Evil 2 is 
if not really close to number one of all time for me. Yeah. I mean, it's probably number two because I'd probably have to put knowing me and my attachment to it, Shadow of the Colossus in front of it. Okay. Just because, like, Shadow of the Colossus is just a beautiful experience. Like, that game does so much with so little. It's, it's you know, the absolute pinnacle of minimalism and design and still telling, you know, very, like, emotional story where no one's talking. Yeah, I never get into that game. I, I played it a bunch. I just can never get yeah. into it. But, uh, yeah, Resident Evil 2, like, I played it, you know, the day it came out. I remember being at this awful, like, mall or this Walmart in Missouri. I was in Missouri for, like, two years. Worst two years of my life. (laughs) But, uh, I mean, honestly, had I not started playing Resident Evil 2 at the time when it happened and I had not fallen into it so deeply, Mm -hmm. I I can guarantee you there would have been dead people. In that town of Missouri. Damn. <laughs> yeah, if if not me, guaranteed at least two other people would have died. <laughs> like oh. like I was in a really fucking dark spot. And I had a friend I met when I was living there that was also psychotically involved with Resident Evil 2. And we would speed run Resident Evil 2 and record ourselves playing it on a VHS tape. This shot right here of the reveal trailer is so cool. Yeah. Did did you see the the other trailer and not the reveal trailer that came out same day? That's more of the actual like gameplay part? No, I don't think I did. Yeah, this one was really cool for the reveal, but I really liked the other trailer that actually shows more of like the third person camera angle and actually being in that world. And the base level changes they made. But yeah, when we would play Resident Evil 2, you know, we were recording us playing on VHS tapes. So we had to get our playthroughs down to under two hours. (laughs) Wow. So me and that guy, I think his name was like Cooper or Colin, some, some weird C name. I haven't thought about that guy really since 2000. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, we, we would sit there and figure out the best ways we could get through that game. So we'd like take the old CRT TV, crank the brightness all the way up. So you didn't have to worry about like missing right. the little key glinting in the background. You just saw it on the ground. See, I like and, this cause like, I'm not sure where he is, but I also kind of recognize this. Oh yeah. Like, as soon as I saw like the bodies and the door frame of like the little yeah. windows, like I knew immediately. Like, is this where the liquor like, shows up? This, uh, you go way? around this. Here's the like the police office. You come through here. Once you get Ooh. through the door to the right and go back, that then exits out into the hallway where the liquor would show up. I gotta say, if I see someone's blood shoot out like that, I'm not gonna say hang in there. Yeah, <laughs> like oh. Never mind, you're fucked. Also, the door closes on the guy, and there's clearly something biting him on the other end. So then he just pulls out the 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 better half, so to speak, of this poor bastard. <laughs> just run. Yeah. But yeah, like I, I can't fucking wait for this Resident Evil Two, and to know that it's coming out soon. Like is January. It, is it only on or February? No. Okay, good. I well, I mean, it, it's probably going to be like Resident Evil Seven, which is going to be I, like there'll be certain things that are only on PlayStation, but the 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 base game is going to be everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. I might buy this. I really like Resident Evil Two. I don't know. This does look way better. Like, yeah. this looks like Resident Evil 4, gameplay-wise. Yeah. 
You know, I I need to go back to give Resident Evil Seven another shot. Uh, well, uh, well our well supposed to be co-host Jeremy played a lot of it recently. I did a uh, I watched a let's play of it. I I'm not good at games like that. I wouldn't get very far, which is why I don't know if I'll buy this. I might. yeah, like the the thing for me with Resident Evil Seven was at least again playing it at launch. You know, when it first came out, it just like no matter how I tweaked like the controller sensitivities, like you still turned so fucking slow. Yeah. <laughs> and you walk so fucking slow. Like it's it's those raw mechanical limitations to kind of, you know, force like more tense moments. And that shit, you know, was just starting to get on my nerves. I think they've had some considerable, like, updates to it. And it probably, you know, works a lot smoother now. But I just knew, like, to the point to where, like, as I was getting a fair amount through, like, my first playthrough, the only playthrough I tried on Resident Evil 7 was I saw, hey, if you beat the game a certain way, the character gets running shoes so he can walk faster. Like, you (laughs) cocksuckers. (laughs) <laughs> I love the atmosphere. I love the style. I love the way they were yes. telling the story. But it was just like I yeah. was just getting absolutely annoyed playing it. it. Looks like the zombies all look at least in this year a little different. They're all of them. That's yeah. Well, the, they have more varied, you know, yeah. hair face combinations, and they just look better. Man, I tell you one thing that terrified me. I think. Effect, actually affected me for years walking by open doorways was that one door, I think it's in the police station, that's all boarded up and they can reach through and grab you. Yeah. Oh my god, that shit gave me nightmares. Yeah, you know, when you said that, it reminded me, uh, now we're going real obscure movie oh boy. in that game. Okay. <laughs> the People Under the Stairs. Oh, that sounds terrifying. It's one of the weirdest '90s movies. I don't like I could probably. It it's so weird, and it's like there's so many things going on in that movie just as a premise. So it takes place in like Compton, L.A. There's like this affluent white family that adopts a lot of people in this bad neighborhood, <laughs> and like this gangbanger kid and his friends are trying to break into the house and steal shit because it's a nice house and then come to find out like it's like the the parents are these fucking psychotic killers and torturers and they run their adopted kids basically like lord of the flies but there is like a scene of there actually are like people under the stairs where they've cut out their tongues and cut out their eyes, like hear no evil, see no evil shit. Jeez. <laughs> and yeah, like the hands come up under like the floorboards. I want to say, you know, like, <laughs> Oh my God. And I, I, I've thought about rewatching this movie just so I could remember the deep weirdness. Like the guy has like, Oh my God. Yeah, th- this movie's so fucking weird. And uh l- like they set off like they're together yeah, Doberman Pinchers rip apart one of the kids' friends and like the guy that gets trapped, like they cut out his tongue and there's a scene of him like with his tongue missing as he's trying to talk to the one girl they're trying to escape. Yeah, they're hiding in the walls. Yeah, dude, this movie's so fucking weird. But I remember, like, I spent my entire, like, early childhood watching nothing but, like, martial arts and horror movies. See, I I don't do horror movies. (laughs) Never really have. I like The Purge. That's the only ones I really got into and and saw. Which are barely horror movies or more thrillers. Yeah. There's a lot of weird... Wes Craven, like, sexual fetish shit going on in that People Under the Stairs. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, I can't I can't wait for Resident Evil 2. 
Yeah, and, and I'm so glad it's not Resident Evil Remake. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank God for that. Cause just looking at that ten seconds of that gameplay video, I was like, oh, never mind. I You're like, yeah. This. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no. It was great at the time because we didn't know any better. Yeah. Actually, I wouldn't even say it was great at the time. I think it was still annoying as shit at the time. It's all you had. Pretty much. And, uh, well, another old game is Shaq Fu. <laughs> yeah, a, a, another old game made anew. For like, I had reason. literally just started playing this right before we started. And, like I, like I told you, I got ten minutes in, and I had already been, like, astounded by the levels of casual racism and, you know, homophobia. <laughs> Oh, like the Chinese guys here? Yeah, yeah, like the Chinese guy <laughs> has like a a hideous, you know, stereotypical Chinese, you know, voice. Apparently in the the lore of this game, Shaq is like an orphan baby that goes to that gets found in China and adopted into this village and they bully him because he's tall, not because he's black. <laughs> like <laughs> Like they're okay with him, you know. Like the the most obvious difference, they only choose one to be a bully about him. And this old guy, that this very short run up, they allude to him maybe being a homosexual. <laughs> and then Shaq's like, "Yeah, I saw the way you were looking at me when I was doing those high kicks. <laughs> I saw your browser history. Let's yep. not talk about it." So that's what I just saw. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but yeah, it, and then like in the loading screen there's like like this village and it has like, you know, some of the background signage. There's a fast food restaurant that's called HFC like Hung Low Fried Chicken. <laughs> I was like, "Oh no. What are you doing?" But yeah, playing it it really does feel like like a bad like clicker mobile game almost. Like it looks like you it. move left to right, you smash some buttons, there's some entirely basic combos you could probably do, you know, just tapping buttons on a screen. I was having like weird performance hitches. Someone slipped off the Jenny Craig wagon. Yeah. Looks there's like you ate all the low hanging fruit. Oh well, yeah, welcome to yeah, the yeah, it's it was just so bad. It was it was just, you know, an absolute torrent of bad jokes, bad line reading, you know, <laughs> mildly inappropriate. <laughs> Not even like good, like I, I don't know, there's sometimes, like, like Rick and Morty is, I think, a good example of that, where it's like, this is really stupid and inappropriate, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, this is just all, like, bad dad jokes, but from a guy in a different language through a translator who's asleep. <laughs> why, why are you messing around with this guy? Break his shield and kill him like you did the last one. Yeah, well, you've got to, like, charge up... Like you'll see, like his punches turn red, and that means you can hit the the kick button. I love the animation; just, it just switches. He just turns around and teleports the yeah. other direction. Holy it's, crap! It's, it's so bad. And as I told you, the only reason I got a hold of this game and wanted to try it is the Barack Fu DLC, that was a free DLC, which was surprising. In which. You're Barack Obama kicking ass and taking names, smoking cigarettes and shooting guns. That does sound pretty great. Yeah, but it's this gameplay, though. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how far I, I'm going to end up going, but it's one of those experiences where I need to have it. Why did it just say, can you... Oh, with Barack, okay. I just saw, can you smell? I was like, is that where we're going to end it? So we're just doing yeah. rocks, okay? Yeah, pretty much. It's like a, a, something that happened in my life, like right after, 
like the weird wave of like martial arts and horror movies was I had a movie rental place near my house that had a massive library of old like grindhouse and black exploitation films. Yeah. So that's essentially what this Brock Food DLC is is like a really weird parody like old black exploitation movie like Shaft. <laughs> but without like the interesting political commentary and social message. It's like, hey, we just want to make a movie about, like, you know, we just want to make our James Bond, but have a black guy be in the movie, and that'd be okay. That's essentially the whole reason wow. Richard Roundtree wanted to be Shaft. It's like, hey, I just want to be a cool dude that, you know, does cool shit and, you know, beats the bad guy up, fucks the fucks a nice white lady. <laughs> But, you know, like, have it be a person of color, you know, representing yeah. us in the movie. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I that's going to be something I do tomorrow is I definitely need to start up and see where that stupid Barack Fu goes, because it's. It was one of those things where I thought it was a fucking joke when I first saw that trailer you just watched. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, no, that's real. Oh no, I need that. <laughs> I I need that immediately. Like what am I doing with my life not playing Barack Fu right now? I'll tell you, we should be playing. It's not nearly that serious, but it's silly. Um I played a game that was at, it's actually free. I found it on Reddit. If you go to itch.io and look up Dr. Orbit, it's this game Package Man. And I, it is a blast. <laughs> You literally have 30 seconds to load these boxes into the back of the truck. As you see me scrambling to, to do that. It's very physics-based. Boxes are falling out and driving me crazy. Uh, <laughs> I think, yep, I get a great trick shot there. So you load the truck up, and then your shift starts. So you go ahead and get in the truck. And the whole object of the game is it's basically Paperboy. And you take these boxes and you chuck them into the windows or the doors. <laughs> it is so much fun. Um, you, it is. It's on like I said, it's on itch dot yeah itch dot dot io, and it's one of those things where you just support them however you want. And this you is know, pretty I've, much I've the game. Never been to itch io before. I hadn't either, but there's all kinds of stuff on there. <laughs> yeah, there's. There's a lot of weird stuff. A lot of things that, you know, get made in game jams end up on there. Right into the window. I think I decided to jump out. <laughs> He's like, I'm done with this all. <laughs> and then you do it the next day. Uh, apparently they're going to be adding, like, customization and things to it. And right now this is pretty much the gameplay loop. It's oddly satisfying. Yeah. I, I really like it. Hey, wait for me! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was just a little game I played. A little shout-out to Dr. Orbit and Package Man. Yeah, that... That's the thing of, you know... Do 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 one thing well. Yeah. And you can usually find something cool, which is why, like, I'm really interested in... It should be coming out sometime soon this year. Is, a uh, my friend Pedro. I don't know what that is. It's a. Uh, it's basically like a uh, side-scrolling 3D Hotline Miami, but with like weird Tony Hawk shit. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is one of those games I had seen because I I check out a bunch of subreddits that are like game dev you know, weird game jam experiment shit. And I saw this guy post like his like initial, I don't want to say like unity mock-up of this game and it got funding and they're making a full scale game. And it looks fucking cool. This looks, it's going to be on the switch. This looks like it should almost be called Deadpool. Yeah, it's pretty much, 
you know, if Deadpool skateboarded and, you know, kicked frying pans in midair to bounce bullets off of to shoot people and unlock doors. There's this a level. So cool. Yeah. There, there's a level. Uh, you, I don't know if they show it in this trailer, but you're riding on a motorcycle and you're like just doing backflips, jumping over cars. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, yeah, it's like Hotline Miami, Max Payne, and Tony Hawk mixed in. You know what this reminds me of that was supposed to be a cool game? Oh, what is the name of that John? I think it's John Woo was a video game. Stranglehold? Yes. That was actually, it played well. It was just no, it didn't. a really dumb story. <laughs> I thought it played terribly. Sir, I'll, I'll have you know, I played the fuck out of that game and then was immediately done with it. <laughs> <laughs> it had some really rough spots. Oh, yeah, there's the motorcycle part. And the kick flips. Yeah, man. Stranglehold and... was a game that was supposed to be like really rad, crazy combat and a lot of fun. I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, it had really bad spots. There were certain yeah. levels that were better designed than others. Like in the in the points in time where the levels worked well and were well designed the game really shined, but for the most part, yeah, there were big areas. I want to say late in the game, you're on like these like floating rickshaws and it's all like steel sheeting that's just getting shot up and blown out. And uh, I remember there being a lot of cool things there, but like the the hotel lobby was probably the only like really well done part. Like, you got the chandeliers and the banisters to slide down. Um, which reminds me of a game that probably did this exact same thing better. It was yeah. a it was a ridiculous, uh, like GTA clone back in the day of the PS2. Uh, what is it? PS2 GTA clones. It's it was like you you were in Mexico. And oh, it's some loco total overdose. Yup. As soon as I went and to you GTA, could, like, Mexican clone of total overdose came up. Yeah, it was that game was so dumb but so fun. Like it had some mechanics that I think got pirated into the first true crime streets of L.A. So it had like weird like bullet time dives like from like Max Payne, but really bad driving physics in the cars. But the cool thing was you could like prep like in say like just cause you could like get into like the actions phase and like dive out of the cars into slow mo and shoot people. They had weird like wall run jump and then you'd backflip or jump off the wall into slow mo dives. It had uh, your whenever your super meter got filled up and you hit your special. Like one of the specials was literally you pulled out the fucking guitar cases from Desperado. Yep. <laughs> I just remember, man, like this game was terrible, but I remember loving it so much because it actually controlled well for the time. Okay, yeah, I do remember that. I remember playing the hell out of this game. Yeah. It's so weird, like, that weird mid-tier knockoff game that has kind of been, you know, resorted to the realm of mobile and done, you know, without any, like, dignity. <laughs> you know what? R.I.P. THQ. What? <laughs> oh, THQ. Yeah. You know a game, a really obscure game, we're doing a really obscure game with Jacob this time, that I loved from the PlayStation 2 was State of Emergency. <laughs> Do you ever play that? Yeah, there, there's, there was a second one as well. Which was bad. 
And, the first and one wasn't well, good, but... <laughs> the the majority of people would say State of Emergency One was bad. I, mean, State but of Emergency I, one I was enjoyed better. it. Just just a riot simulator. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap! I forgot about this game. Yeah. I mean, if I were playing a game, I. I I honestly like enjoyed beat 'em ups because I yeah. was like a big Streets of Rage kid back in the day, but uh, I liked Fighting Force. I don't think I ever played Fighting Force on the PS One. It was like it was essentially like a Streets of Rage kind of game, like early PS One, and you know you you beat up the guys that dropped their clubs or their swords, and you could pick them up. Um. And then there was another one. Uh, the there's a there's a subreddit called Tip of My Joystick. Okay. Of you know, like there's a subreddit called Tip of My Tongue, of people putting out like random memories, and you're kind of crowdsourcing an answer to help you remember something. Yeah. So Tip of My Joystick is that, but specifically for video games, and randomly like a few weeks back uh someone brought up the like an old game is made by rocksteady urban chaos it's a first person shooter where you're a riot cop and like a crazy dark dystopian country but yeah that's that's fighting force this game was actually really cool back in the day but it was so goddamn short <laughs> i remember getting so mad with fighting force like like oh man this is awesome wait that was it <laughs> i think guess we're gonna state re- of emergency was the same way yeah those 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 launch window ps1 games were especially just like no, nothing was as bad as launch window dreamcast no because launch window dreamcast was literally arcade ports and then like one game that was new <laughs> like oh hey do you want to play this weird like you know on rail shooter and need a light gun or do you want to play typing of the dead or do you, or do you want to play blue stinger or whatever the fuck that game was that was like a arcade version like knockoff of resident evil oh, i don't know yeah, it, I don't know, but uh, yeah, Urban Chaos was actually like a really cool game. And once the first Batman Arkham game came out and I saw the name Rocksteady, I remember sitting there just like clawing in the back of my mind. Like, why the fuck does this name sound familiar? Not because of the fucking Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah. And then, bam, it clicked in my head like after... A solid week of just like what the hell, and then bam, urban chaos, riot control. And I just remembered one of the cool things about that was like the taser. If you use the taser too long, it set people on fire. (laughs) And then it reminded me of Siphon Filter, which was also a game. Where if you shot a guy with a taser and you just sat there and held it long enough, you just as interesting you see the uh uh to flames. Oh god and then <laughs> you'd hear like the 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 Asian woman who was like your controller, like one of your fellow agents, I can't remember her name. She would just come in like, Really? Was that necessary? <laughs> you get a random you know, codec essentially from like Metal Gear, like, bro, what's wrong with you? Hey, this, what is this game? This is Urban Chaos. That, is there a different Urban Chaos? I don't know. That's all I was just looking up. <laughs> yeah, Urban Chaos is like a first person shooter. This may be another Urban Chaos game. Shit, I don't know. Uh, okay, yeah, this is Urban Chaos for PS1. Yeah, I think the uh, Urban Chaos I'm talking about was a PS2. Yep. I think but I yeah, it, it. 
it was like a dark, like it was very violent. Cause it, remember you could like bash people with your riot shield and it was like a clear oh. riot shield. Yep. I just found that. Yeah. And you just see like blood spray up on your shield and just be shooting people's heads open. Okay. <laughs> this looks cool. This reminds me of Swan. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a really cool game. It's, you know, one of those rare games that I imagine you could actually play now and enjoy from that era of weirdness. This actually looks like a pretty solid shooting, too. Yeah, it was made by a game that went, went on to then just do nothing but Batman games for 10 years. Yeah. Pretty good Batman games, though. Also, one more random deep right. cut game just because talking about violence and weirdness they made a ps2 sequel game to the movie the thing john carpenter's the thing right and this game had this weird ai component of trust and like paranoia so you had like a random like ai squad that followed you around and if they got freaked out by the creatures or they were concerned, one of the guys might be infected. You could go to like the little place to do the test on your blood to see if, you know, somebody was infected. But you could also just kind of randomly when they weren't looking, like shoot the ground near them and they'd panic. And it's like, ah, 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 you know, <laughs> like old, old reaction shots. But I just remember like one of the, strongest memories of like man games are cool was the, one of the people in your squad i remember he had a shotgun and i just said hey how much can i freak this guy out right and so i just in- intentionally did everything i could to bother the guy to the point to where you're outside of like the facility and you're in the snow staying in the snow the hypothermia you know bugs people you know like so you guys you gotta worry about you know body temperature and stuff like that but after probably a solid 20 minutes of just intentionally doing everything i could to freak the guy out i just see him run out into the snow from where we were get behind like a i want to say like an ac unit or a heater unit outside you know like the big metal stand units you'd see like right. all this, you know, metallic interior pieces here. And then he just fucking pulls the shotgun out and blows his fucking brains out. Oh God. <laughs> and I was just sitting there like, what did I fucking just do to this poor guy? <laughs> Cause yeah. Like if you freak them out, they could, you know, potentially start shooting you. So you is there to like yourself. a set amount of people on the base? Yeah, there's so many people in like your crew and there's different times I think where you're not actively interacting with them. Huh. And then you meet back up with them after certain areas. I don't remember how far I ever got into it. I just remember you know bothering this one guy after you know we had done like the little blood test. And one of the guys on the squad was infected and turned into one of the creatures we had to shoot him and that really set his mood off and then i just started bothering him and he just went out of his way to leave the group and just got in a corner shotgun animation you know points the shotgun straight up with his right thumb just bang no head done damn (laughs) and i was like okay and that makes me think of exactly how i felt playing state of decay 2 yeah, we That's get a transition that. for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that that is. I mean, that sounds about right. Yeah. So you played some State of Decay too. I actually completed a playthrough of it uh, as the traitor. And I, like I love the, it. Yeah, like it's it's a game where I really appreciated the systems in place. I really like the depth and the weirdness of the mechanics of, oh, hey, you know, 
this one perk here has these odd Im- you know, implementations based on how you're playing and building the structure up and all this other stuff. But I just was playing it alone and I wasn't really, you know, super into it at the moment. And I just hit a massive wad of jank. And I saw like one of the people that was following me and I was trying to figure out how the rucksacks worked. I handed them the rucksack and then they fell through the earth. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah we had just cleared out like this house and uh, we had just you know got the first house established in the area and just built you know like the uh the research lab to try to get my brother cured and i go out to go get some other supplies to start expanding the base and the one military lady you meet in the beginning intro i hand her a rucksack full of like medical supplies and she like makes a scream like she's being attacked and just falls to the earth and dies. And like, what the fuck? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't experienced many problems with the game. Um I think like the main problem I experience with it is sometimes you drive over a rock, the car would just get completely stuck on it. Okay, um, yeah. Other than that, I didn't encounter a whole lot of issues. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have any problems afterwards. Like, I reloaded and tried some other stuff. But, I don't know, like... I think the thing that was bothering me was, like... Oh, hey, if you make noise, randomly zombies spawn nearby. Yeah. Well, And, and the game is very... I don't want to say it's stealth-heavy, but it kind of is... It, you're rewarded for being stealthy. Yes, but later in the game, like I think at this point that I, in the video, because this should be Julia, this should be my main traitor. She has a bunch of combat perks where once yeah. I got her leveled up, which did take a while, I felt confident just going through and taking everything as loud as I needed to be because I would, yep, Julia Fay, I would just wreck people with my sword because I was basically a martial artist where I could just sweep the legs, chop their arms off. It was absolutely great. If do right, no can defend. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you said sweep the leg and I immediately thought oh. it <laughs> Yeah, it's, I enjoy it. I enjoy the base building. I enjoy the whole having to take care of people and, using those people to go out and using their skills to do certain things and taking out the, the plague hearts. I played a lot of state of decay one, but I never completed it. Cause I always got to a point where I just felt like a grind. And for some reason I never felt that way with this game. I think maybe it's just because now I'm kind of a smarter gamer than when I played the original. Cause now I'm constantly like, while I'm out and about remembering landmarks and finding like new because you you move up in the world you get bigger bases yeah just finding that base and being like all right this is our new goal this is what we're working towards we got to get more people more supplies whatever it might be and the end game story is actually pretty cool like because with the trader you're trying to build a community of this like or like a, a uh a caravan more or less you want to build this area into a infrastructure of where people can come and get goods. And it, it kind of goes to shit and things go crazy. And then you kind of build it back up and try to build a network. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. And depending on how you play your main character and how you play your leader is how they're going to be a traitor or a warlord or whatever it might be. And you can play through each different story. And I actually really want to. And there's three different maps and, Lots of different vehicles, lots of different weapons. I love building my own weapons. That was one of the best parts of, I think it was like a rebar. I think it was a rebar sword, or maybe it was just a rebar hammer. The sword I got was absolutely badass. And you build that with a, like a, I think a smithing shop, or a armory or something along those lines. You can like build explosives and things like that and upgrade your vehicles and... I thought the game was absolutely great. 
Yeah, like I appreciated so much of the like I loved the like the flavor text on all the random perks and how drastically some of those perks changed everything, but I think my problem was when I started it, it's like, man, this game is a really specific pace. Yeah. And if you're, you know, not in the mood for that, it's never going to be for you. You know, like and that if that's fair, sometimes, you know, games that are amazing, you're just trying to play them at the wrong time for yourself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, hitting the jank and like seeing some of the weird, like, animations not queuing right going over some stuff and i saw a little bit ago you're trying to go through like a doorway and getting kind of like wobble stuck on that frame before it finally popped you through that does happen <laughs> and it's just like if this were in a better like functioning game i probably would have been much more immediately into it but like i wish this game had they had taken another year just to polish it off yeah, because it is great, but it could have used a little bit more. Yeah, they're owned by Microsoft now. Now, yes, so they actually yeah, have a so. lot more money. So hopefully, State of Decay Three is like one of the best games ever. I think it could be. Well, you know, the original plan when they made the first one was to then make an MMO. I don't want that. Yeah, they they scratched those plans. And turn that into like the base structure for the multiplayer in this mode. I would love not game. an MMO, but for like for me and you and Bob and whoever else to have our own town, and I could yeah. actually go and defend your house and stuff like that. That would be very cool. Because as and it is not right a, now, you only temporarily jump into my world, and you you've got a certain distance tether. Like, yeah, which seems you can only get it so like far it was away quite from a people. Bit. Yeah, it, it's reasonable, but still like. You can't go exploring while I'm, you know, managing the base or, you know, I can't like swap out yeah, and go really, try to get some resources to heal you. Really probably shouldn't though. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I guess I didn't see the tether as a big deal because it was like, well, yeah, you're playing a multiplayer game. You should probably be near each other playing together. Yeah. But I don't know. It's fair. just like, I I appreciate a lot of what it was doing. It's just like, I just don't think I'm in the mood for this game and this slow of a pace. I guess too... this is this is like always the game I want to play. <laughs> like No Man's Sky. Yeah. No, I, I'm way too like ADD, like high speed reaction based kind of thing, which is kind of like my real only problem with Dark Souls is it's just so fucking methodical and slow and they they changed that a lot with bloodborne from what i could tell but still it's like oh hey cue the animation hope you didn't fuck it up wait for the animation and then react you know a little pro tip for state of decay 2 that i didn't know for a long time you can load your rucksacks into the car into the trunk which is another thing i love that you could actually load things into the cars but when you get to your base and you park in a parking spot, you can automatically unload the rucksacks into your house. I think they added that with an update. Pretty, yeah, they did. Well, I think it was the State of Decay 2 in general. Well, I think I remember somebody like in a review talking about like they were getting tired of that not being an option immediately when they started up. Yeah, because for I think a long time, I would run into my base with a rucksack, run out, run out, run out, run in, run out. It was just obnoxious <laughs> yeah but then again like i don't know i don't remember whose review that was i just randomly you know listened to an episode of like uh unlocked like that the ign xbox podcast yeah and i i listened to the guy who clearly you know the ps4 is in his primary platform he's like you know one thing i, I wish sony would do is you know, basically CEC controls of like you turn on the TV, you turn on the Xbox, it turns on the TV, you turn it off, it turns the TV off. And I was like, that's just a setting you have to go turn on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank and you. It's like, thank you for following Oreo side. Yeah. The, uh, the thing that, uh, was like, 
I feel bad for the people that played God of War, the new one that just came out. Yeah. That didn't go to the settings and see that there was an accessibility option to turn button mashing into just hold the button. Oh. So you skip this entire annoying mini game and just, okay, I got to line up the little. I would do that. Uh, the, the little chisel into the spot. I got to follow the vibrations of my controller to find the spot and then hit the button. No, just walk up, hit circle, hit circle again. You're done. <laughs> well, or, that, hey, I got to s- smash cool. square to lift a pillar up. Yeah. Or I can just hold square. You know, you know why, why am I going to burn my forearms out? <laughs> yeah, I get the button matching thing, but I like the whole vibrating to find the hole. That sounds weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, I thought that system was pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's just I don't have a controller currently that has Rumble Motor still in it. So, oh, so even if I wanted to do that, I don't have that option. I would have had to have like used this other adapter I have to plug yeah. my Xbox controller into my PS4 to play God of War to have any kind of rumble feature. I mean, I think that's good that they have those options, and I think options like that are always good. Yeah. Just give people the option. Why not? Yeah, that's what I was saying so much about Gungeon was so much of that update is just quality of life and different options. I can turn off all the screen shake and motion blur. Thank fucking God. Yeah, and for me, it's like with Prey. I'm gonna get back into playing Prey soon. I started playing that game and it was whooping my ass that game's hard and i just don't enjoy super difficult games like that and i looked in the settings and it's story mode and i was like fuck yeah i'll change it to story mode <laughs> now i'm enjoying the game a lot more yeah it's still a... difficult i still have to kill things and not you know i have to be careful and whatnot but it's not as uh punishing I don't know. I, I think it's just because I play so many games like Prey and so many shooters all the time. Yeah. It's just like, I remember somebody saying, you know, when I was playing Wolfenstein 2, so many people I was listening to their reviews, I was like, like they had to turn the difficulty down. I was like, really? I to did. be fair, I there are <laughs> ridiculous spots in yeah. Wolfenstein 2 that even on easy are fucking dumb. <laughs> I didn't like... I don't know what it is about Wolfenstein. I didn't like it. I absolutely loved it. I, I, I remember... I have it and Old Blood on Xbox. I should go back and I've play. got all the, the DLC for Wolfenstein 2 that are all just short little, like, anthology chapter stories I need to get right around to playing. Uh, and those and the DLCs for Far Cry 5. Again, just dumb, short, one and done experience anthology. I need to finish Far Cry Five. That's what I need. Yeah, to I, it was so foreign to me when I heard you say the words "pray" was hard. It is. <laughs> but again, I think also it may have been right before or immediately right after "pray," but I was pretty sure I replayed all the Bioshock games right yeah. before I. Pl- Right before I played Prey. I when played did the Bioshock collection come out? It's been a while now. Yeah, my roommate bought it when it was on sale. I just I, I don't replay games typically. I thought about getting the Bioshock collection, but I don't think I'd play them all the way through. Well, that's the thing about games that are so much focused on mechanics and not experience is that those games usually hold up a lot better over time. Yeah. Like, I'll probably so, yeah. finish Moonlighter, and I'll probably start playing New Game Plus, but I might not necessarily finish it. I want to play through State of Decay 2 once or twice more times because the the world is going to be different because of, based on my leader. So that's Yeah, like don't they have, fun. like, the kind of, like, New Game Plus, your character? Like, they do. 
But I, I won't like do new... that though, because I'm. That's gonna be. You know, I'll take Julia from my main game, and so she'll be in the new one. I don't want to do that. I want to take someone entirely new. But yeah, they do have that start, option. Start a clean slate every time. Yeah, because and then I'm just gonna end up playing that trading campaign. I think. So I want to play through a warlord or. There's a couple other builder. I think there might be like a doctor one. Yeah, I want to play through one of those. See what those are like. And just do things totally different from how I did it before. Like before I did all farms and medical places and like a bigger base. I went all melee weapons. This time I'll probably do all explosives or something. Yeah, that was... Those lines. That was how I started to end up playing like any of the Bethesda games. It's like all right, I'm only going to go in barehanded and light armor and just run at people like a savage or yeah. The the main reason why I never played any of the DLC for Fallout 4 even though I own them all is because like I forced myself to play Fallout 4 entirely differently than I've ever played any of the Bethesda game. And by the end of that campaign of playing through that character, I was like I fucking hate this character. <laughs> I hate this build. And by the time like Far Harbor came out, I was like, I don't have it in me to start a new character and get far enough to then be able to play Far Harbor. And I can't stand looking at the way I've got this character set up. Right. <laughs> it's not a simple run base. Let's just start it over. Right. And yet it's tedious in the case of like a state of K2 completing a run. But uh, you know it's it's a, it's a lot lower, you know, initial investment. Right. Yeah, that's why I think I could play through Save Decay two a couple times. But probably, I'll probably go back to Fallout eventually. Play around a little bit. I go back and I play around a little bit in Skyrim because those games are really really good. But yeah, Save Decay two. I'll definitely play through some more. But uh, we are what over two hours now. So that's yeah, about our quick happens. point. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, thank you for joining us, guys. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about coming up here on Play Trollbeard? Or, uh, not really. I, uh, I, I want to say, if you ever get a chance to find a way out on sale, definitely play that. Hey, find find somebody to play that with. No, it's on Xbox. It's on PC. Okay. And it works the same way for all the platforms. If you have a copy your friend or your compatriot can either play locally with you or online. Yeah. They can download the demo version, but yeah, they don't get achievements and all that. Right. I, I, I don't think they get the trophies yeah. or achievements now. I mean, but, I think uh, that's fair. I think that just them being like, yeah, you can have a copy for free. Basic kind of sort of. Yeah. I, I think that's absolutely brilliant. That game was not supposed to do very well. Yeah. It's, you know, for all the the evils the internet hate machine wants to espouse of EA, you know, they really have made some interesting new franchises that actually were successful, that people love, and then now those people that fell in love with that franchise realize they kind of stopped making those games currently, and now they're all butthurt. Like, <laughs> all the Dead Space fans, which I'm one of them, Dead Space 1 is up there, probably top five for me. Games of all time. But, uh... Yeah, so in EA's forecast, they said A Way Out would sell 203,000 copies in 2018 and 894,000 copies total. That's what they thought. They broke 2 million this week. That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. For a $30 game, I want to say. Yeah, something like that. But uh, yeah, I played through with a friend of mine. It looks and man, great. You... It looks totally different from like anything. It, it's got some some weird spots, and it's got some jank. Yeah. But just that overall experience of you know getting through some of the corny dialogue, just having those moments with someone you're friends with, man, that that was such a good time. Yeah, it looks good. It's uh, something I definitely like to play. Yeah, but other than that, probably just uh, is it, more Fortnite and chiseling away at my uh, backlog. 
is a way out mechanically simple? Like, could you play that with like a, a someone who wasn't necessarily really into video games? Yeah, there's certain aspects where there's like cooperative kind of like mini games. Right. So like there's a there was a construction site you end up at and uh you know midway through the game n- not really spoiling telling you that you go to a location but as you're walking through the thing you're looking for somebody you see some guys on the the construction site arm wrestling and there's a couple of these scenarios in the game you come across like dartboards horseshoes uh baseball like the guy throwing a baseball and a guy hitting it with a bat yeah where you can walk up and hit the action button and you'll swap out and take the place so my friend and i we uh just moved over and we got over to the uh arm wrestling thing and this is completely optional but it was smash square faster than the other person to win <laughs> and you're talking about two stubborn assholes yeah. for a solid two and a half minutes, like laughing their fucking asses off. Like, dude, just give up. No, you. <laughs> and just like by the end of it, like literally both of our forearms were just so fucking in pain. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, the the base mechanics and walking around, exploring the world. Yeah, anybody you know, that doesn't really play games often, you know, after a little bit of adjustment, they could definitely get into this and, you know, maybe skip, you know, the weird other stuff, but the story and, you know, the choices you get to make, you know, between you and the other guy, Vince and Leo here, it was just a damn good time. There's some bad dialogue, some goofy old action movie writing, this part but, right uh, here, though, because I've watched a little bit of this. <laughs> this oh, is yeah. like this had to happen in a game like this. Yeah, it's just like a little sliding bar, and you just press the button, like when you're in the little window of safety, and you move up, and you gotta time yourself with the other person. Otherwise, one guy gets too high or low, and they start to get unstable and potentially fall. Yeah, man, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, it, it's it's fun. I've seen this game drop on sale before, even below the thirty dollar point. I uh, yeah. Other than that, like I said, I'm just chiseling away. Games are cool. Yeah, play that Shaq Fu. No, see how far I can tolerate that. You don't have to do that. <laughs> it, it's it's like you know a toothache. I just got to poke at it until yeah. it stops being interesting. Yeah, I think I'm going to probably finish Moonlighter this week. Oh, I'm going to play Destiny tomorrow. I don't know. I'm sorry. We'll see. I'll We'll see next podcast. I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> I'm not going to, like, if I start playing it and I don't love it, I'm not going to play it more. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I might not play it at all. I don't know. Uh, anyways, so I'm I'm gonna finish Moonlighter. Um, I'm gonna get back into Prey. Uh, can't re- I got some more Project One Sixty Eight videos coming out this week, and then I'm gonna get back onto recording for uh, Battle Chef Brigade because I I am hell bent <laughs> on I want to just have a a series of that out because I love that game so much. Um, but other than that. I don't have anything that I plan on playing. Probably more Pokemon. We're going to have a Pokemon discussion here soon with Bob. Not soon. Well, as soon as he can. <laughs> yeah. Soon, TM. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> thank you for listening, guys. Uh, go check out the Lark Brothers. have a new video out. It's uh, They went to crown qualifications. That was a lot of fun. There's actually some really great fighting in that video. Um, I got new Project 168 stuff coming out, and go back and listen to the old podcast of this one, because this one's still new enough, you can just go back and listen to them all. Why not? But we're going to stream it every week, probably on Mondays. Seems like Monday's a good day. But we'll see, it'll be in the evening. 
But thank you for listening, guys. Uh, this has been a great podcast. Uh, see ya. We'll have, have a, a good one. We'll have an ending one day. <laughs>